Hi, it's Mary Jo. I just want to come and encourage you through scripture. And today I want to talk about um, those that are having an illness or a sickness and um, you're thinking that God is okay with that and that he's putting you through this for a reason. I, through studying the word, I just don't feel that God wants us to hurt and be sick and let me just show you some scriptures that I've been reading. If you turn with me to Mark chapter 5, and this is where the lady had the bleeding issue. And Jesus is walking in this large crowd. Anybody that's been at a concert or, or in a crowded place at a fair or something, or circus, and you're in this crowd, it's hard to, when someone touches you, it's just so many people, you, you know, you don't know who it is. And this woman has, listen to what she said. Uh, Jesus uh, went with him, verse 24, 524 in Mark. Uh, Jesus had um, was walking, it said a large crowd followed him and pressed around him. And a woman was there who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years. She had suffered a great deal under the care of many doctors. She suffered under the care of many doctors. There's some out there that have been to every doctor they can think of trying to solve what their body is doing trying to figure it out and they've only gotten worse you suffered more because I mean you keep searching for your answer through another doctor when the doctor is right here Verse 26, she has suffered a great deal under the care of many doctors and has spent all she had. Oh, we all know that, you know, insurance is, is crazy. Most people can't even afford insurance now. And so um, people are getting worried and anxiety is setting in because of their insurance. And they feel, oh, no, I'm going to get sick. I'm not going to be able to pay. What am I, what's going to happen? Don't worry. Cast all your care upon the Lord. Verse um, in the middle of 26. Yet instead of getting better, she grew worse. Wow. Verse 27. When she heard about Jesus, she came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak. Because she thought, if I could just touch his clothes, I would be healed. That's what she thought. Immediately her bleeding stopped and she felt in her body that she was freed from her suffering. You know, this she had a bleeding issue. She's in the middle of a crowd. She felt because she knew if I touch his cloak, I will be healed. She did not know if she stopped bleeding. She didn't pull up her robe and look and I don't know, did they have underwear back then? I don't know. They had to. She had to be wearing something. She didn't look at the bleeding had stopped. And it was probably something similar to endometriosis, where women bleed. And you don't bleed 24-7 all the time, but it's a bleeding issue that occurs um, regularly. It could have been a time that she wasn't bleeding at that time. How did she know that she was healed? It said that she knew in her body that she had been healed. Because it was, she knew that the Lord could heal her. It was her faith. She did not pull up her gown and look. It wasn't visible to her. It was what she felt inside because she knew she just touched his cloak. If she would just touched his cloak and didn't believe that he had the healing power, then nothing would have happened. It was because of her faith and what she knew to be the truth. And we all know what the truth is, the Bible. Verse 30, at once Jesus realized that power had gone out from him. He turned around in the crowd and asked, who touched my clothes? See, we think that we are waiting on God. We ask God to heal us, and we're waiting on him to heal us. But it's already been done at the cross. It's been completed. It's been accomplished. It's, it's done. We just have to believe for it. Jesus didn't turn around and say, be healed. She received her healing by touching him, by her believing in him. 
he did not turn around and lay his hands and, and just put the power to her. She went to him. She went to him. And it was by her faith. It's already been done. It's all, already been accomplished. Actually, let me flip over to um, Psalm 103, verse 2 real quick. Verse 2 and 3. Psalm 103, verse 2 and 3. It says, Praise the Lord my soul and forget not all his benefits. Who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases. All. Not one. Not just this certain type. Not this type. All. A-L-L. -L. I love that word. All your dis diseases. No matter what you have going on, God can heal you. Everything is under the name of Jesus. Verse 31. You see the people crowding against you, his disciples answered. And yet you ask who touched me? Are you crazy? <laughs> But 32, but Jesus kept looking around to see who had done it. You see, Jesus knew. He had the Holy Spirit in him. But sometimes we are ashamed in front of a crowd, ashamed in front of others. And so um, amazing we are ashamed in front of the people at church God will heal us and it's funny and you're at church and you want to be healed and but you'll say oh if God if it's God's will it is God's will he healed all of our diseases and he forgave all of our sins we are so for so quick to uh, believe that he forgave all of our sins oh yes yeah, he, forg he, give he forgives my sins. But we are not so quick to believe he heals us, all of our diseases and illnesses. I don't know why. Because even, where is that story? Um, Matthew, turn to Matthew chapter 9. Remember the guy that um, couldn't walk? And... Chapter 9, Matthew chapter 9, verses 1. Jesus stepped into a boat, crossed over, and came to his own town. Some men brought to him a paralyzed man lying on a mat. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the man, Take heart, your sins are forgiven. He, this man is sick, and he's talking about his sins are forgiven. There's a reason. Listen. At this, some of the teachers of the law said to themselves, This fellow is blaspheming. Knowing their thoughts, Jesus says that he knew what was going to happen. Why do you entertain evil thoughts in your hearts? Which is easier, to say your sins are forgiven or to say get up and, and uh, walk? Verse 6. But I want you to know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. So he said to the paralyzed man, get up, take your mat, and go home. See, and it's so funny. <sighs> In the church today, it's easy to say, oh, yeah, I'm forgiven. My sins are forgiven. All I have to do is ask for forgiveness. No matter what I did, he's going to forgive me, and I can. He's, his mercies are new every morning, and I can go on and, and keep walking with the Lord. But as far as being healed, people pretty much are afraid and keep quiet and um, say, I'll pray for you, or... Um, if it's God's will, it is God's will. In them days, it was easier for them to see that it that it was healed versus their sins, of which they can't see. But now, we are easier to think that He can heal, uh, forgive our sins, which we can't see, versus heal our bodies, which we can see. I don't. Know, it, it's a switch. Well, getting back to um, Mark chapter 5 and the woman that he healed verse 32 but Jesus kept looking around to see who had done it then the woman knowing what had happened to her came and fell at his feet and trembling with fear told him the whole truth see sometimes we are afraid to do it in front of people and God wants us to be able to be vocal about it to say it out loud not to be ashamed of him and how he what he's doing in our lives you know if we can't keep it to ourselves it's, and that's when your faith shines and that's when others see the light is when he's he's 